Senator Padgett. The, um, the only waste coming into New York from out of state having to do with uh, drilling is the drilling waste. It's not, uh, it's not produced water or uh, wastewater per se. It is, it is drilling waste, um, which is you know, primarily the rock and the subsurface material that is ground up when a well drill uh, does its thing. Uh, about four landfills. It, it could be in liquid form because uh, water can be used in the process. Um, and depending on what is used, uh, whether it's water, if it's water or air, it's mostly rock and water. And that can go, um, that can actually be buried on, on site. But if they use oils or other petroleum products, then it has to go to a, uh, an MSW landfill, permitted, 360 permitted landfill. Uh, it, it's permitted in New York. The primary concern with that type of waste is, is radiation um, because drilling does occur in formations where radiation occurs. So all of the landfills that the waste, the four landfills in particular that that waste is accepted at in New York all have radiation detectors and then we have a very, very explicit protocol that they have to do when they bring those loads of waste to the landfill so that it's uh, and the, the instrumentation has to be calibrated, the levels are specified, um, just above background, they are, they, they are triggered and go off, and I understand at least one load that's come into New York did trigger uh, a, detect, a detection device and the waste was rejected. So we, will, we, we carefully check those. Um, all four landfills have radiation detection equipment in operation. Yeah, their permits do. There's this, it is mandatory. It is in their permits. They've accepted this as a condition of their permit to operate. So it's included in their permits. So we do inspections of these facilities. Um, so we, I, I believe we have a very good handle on this. I'm sure I can provide you with those numbers, but I don't know them off the top of my head. Yep. Um, not from high volume hydraulically fracked wells. Uh, from conventional wells, we do allow uh, brine to be used, but only after we do a beneficial use determination where the, the, the brine is actually tested 
for constituents. Uh, we do issue beneficial use determinations for the use of brine uh, when it is just a very salty product. But it's, we carefully look at it before we issue those uh, determinations known as BUDS. Well, there aren't any wells that hydraulically, well, there's no uh, high volume hydraulically fracked wells occurring in New York. So it's not coming from those because they don't happen in New York. But it is coming from conventional wells. And I'm not aware that it's coming from out of state. I know that in state. Production wells, uh, Brian, people do apply to DEC for beneficial use determinations. Okay, and if that were to occur, it would come in from out of state, I think we would, yes, we would know where it's coming from, yes. I'm not aware of any water being shipped to Pennsylvania. Uh, that concern? Just the amount of fresh water that it takes to craft on the market would be a half million gallons a day. Just concerned about is there any concern that water is being taken from your state? We, we, we have a new water withdrawal law in New York. So if anyone is, uh, what's the threshold mark, 100,000? If they can have the capacity to extract more than 100,000 gallons a day, then it triggers uh, the need for a water withdrawal permit from us. So we would know if someone is going to withdraw those amounts and ship them to, and we would know the use and the destination. Thanks again to a, a relatively new law in the books. You're welcome. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Senator. The budget of Article 7 bill has a I think I read in the paper this morning that it's over a billion dollars. The changes by and large seem to actually what's needed to address the concerns that I and many others have had that the county has been spent without successfully targeting real need in underutilized um, areas that have revenue. But I am concerned that there is language that would allow <coughs> a class to serve on site to use this program. Can you tell me how that would work and why I shouldn't be concerned that this would also start with costs and programs? Um, I will let uh, Mark jump in because Mark has been uh, instrumental in the Brownfields reform, but I think the idea is that we do want to capture as many sites that will be cleaned up privately as opposed to publicly if it's a Superfund site where we have to use state Superfund dollars. Uh, we'd rather have a private entity spend the money than the state spend the money. And if the cleanup, uh, whether it's a Superfund site or a conventional Brownfield site, um, as long as it's cleaned up to meet our standards, um, and again, it has to meet all the new triggers in the Brownfield Reforms program, which we hope will keep costs down and, again, target um, the tax credits to places that really need them. I think we wanted to make it as apply as broadly as uh, possible, but I'll let Mark supplement my answer if you don't mind. Well, <clears throat> the, uh, the only thing I would add is that uh, the program would not allow responsible parties who are otherwise obligated under law to clean up the site to be volunteers under the Brownfields program. Other than that, not every uh, class two site would be amenable for redevelopment. So 
we have to go through the engineering. Uh, some might be uh, possible and uh, for redevelopment for active or passive use, but that's going to be based upon the specifics of a site. And as a follow-up to that, there's been some concerns raised that because this would also allow programs to proposals that had both regional significance uh, to be included. And usually when I hear the term regional significance, I assume that the decision to be made by the Regional Economic Council is not by DEC. Um, can you just clarify for me how we make sure that those outside of DEC are not using criteria that don't meet the environmental standards for what we hope this brownfield tax credit to become versus what it has been? Um, yeah. And overridden by um, I'm asking questions. How do we make sure that the standards we want to have in place any project going through the brownfields program will be required to meet uh, the standards that we have for cleanup, uh, established standards um, that have been promulgated and applied and, and are very protective of public health and the environment. Uh, the the, the ec priority economic development projects will be subject to criteria. Uh, that will be developed uh, in cooperation with the economic uh, development folks in ESDC. So we'll be able to override the private obligation criteria to clean up? No. no. I assume what I'm going to show you is question. And then a further concern is that there is funding for the VOA um, efforts that poor communities have been able to do that How do we fix that? Um, I don't have an answer. For how we fix that, there was, uh, I believe, 10 million in the current year budget, and uh, quite a number of projects have been funded. Uh, I know at least uh, a, a 10 or a dozen or so are getting near uh, completion for certification, and I'm not sure whether the funding that in, in the current year budget is going to actually bring them into the uh, into uh, becoming a certified BOA. Um, the Department of State is the entity that is responsible for the BOA program. Um, I'd like to hope that the, uh, the appropriation this year's budget, the $10 million that's, that's out in grants to uh, applicants, is going to bring a number of communities into the BOA program. I'd like to think the delay is because we're looking at all of those uh, places where it has occurred to give you the most up-to-date answer possible, but I apologize that you haven't gotten a response yet. I'll track it down and get you a response. Yeah. You, you don't need to. I will make sure I find it. How long ago did you send it? That's embarrassing. I'm sorry. How many Thank you. Gentlemen, yeah. Engelbright. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Uh, first, I just want to uh, thank you for your appearance here this morning and, uh, as always, a very professional uh, response to our questions. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the governor is uh, proposing extensive changes in the DEC pesticide regulatory authority, eliminating significant provisions that relate to uh, uh, pesticide use category, pesticide application, region application. Uh, some of the features of this proposal include eliminating the DEC's annual report of pesticide sales and substituting reporting of this information by the county. Right. That appears to be a balkanization of information. Uh, and further, uh, there are limits in the amount of type of pesticide information to be made available for public information. So I have a couple of questions about this. Uh, 
first, uh, how is balkanization of information consistent with the governor's initiative to bring about consolidation for efficiency generally? Uh, this seems to run exactly counter to that. You have to, to, to find out what's going on statewide, you have to go to 62 counties separately instead of just to your agency. And so the first question is, how is that consistent with the general theme of consolidation that the government has made a, a great deal of emphasis on? And uh, secondly, uh, how is this in the public's interest? Uh, the, the intent here was to try to improve the data we receive and the usability of the data. Uh, the data, we've, we've had a lot of criticisms of the data that we collect now, that it's not really usable for the purpose uh, that it was intended for, which was to help researchers. I know the concern, you know, originally was because of uh, the incidence of, high incidence of breast cancer on places like Long Island. So it was supposed to be made available to researchers. We've had, despite the fact that we've been collecting the data for years, I think almost 20 years, it hasn't been used. So we're trying to find a way that we can get data. And, and the other problem with it is that it's not publicly accessible because it involved data that came from specific, that was applied at specific addresses. So it hasn't been used as far as I can see Assemblyman and it hasn't been widely made available publicly, and we hope that the data that we collect now will cover a broader universe of, the, of pesticides, and it will be more widely available to a, a wider audience. Whether we've got it, you know, perfect, we're obviously happy to talk about, but uh, that was the intent, was really to make the data, one, more usable and more accessible. Well, I appreciate that. It, it seems to me that uh, some researchers um, uh, have had problems getting responsiveness from the BBC. But setting that aside, uh, the premise of the original law was to gather data over uh, a period of time, 20 or more years. Right. We're just now getting into that period of time where uh, we would have enough data to make use of it. And so making access to this, uh, to, to this data going forward that have to go to each county uh, really doesn't seem to, to be consistent with the legislative intent. Anyhow, let me ask, in, in a little bit of time I have here, I, uh, uh, about the status of the CEQA permitting process. Is there planning to make some substantial changes to that? Um, what exactly are you planning and, and uh, why is this, again, in the public interest? Uh, Seeker is one of those laws that has been uh, heralded and, and criticized by many for many years. It's a really important law, uh, but I think the primary criticism is that it's unnecessarily used to delay projects. So the types of things that we're considering and we've been talking to stakeholders about are putting stiffer time frames in Seeker. Things like mandatory scoping, which I, most people support that you uh, have to go through a scoping process because if you don't on the front end of the seeker process, it can result in delays later on. So you identify the issues up front and once you've identified them, uh, you move on and you stick to those issues. Uh, we're also considering you know, what I would consider modest changes to things like the type two list and the type one list. Uh, things that would encourage things like smart growth. Uh, we're trying to eliminate review of things that pretty are universally accepted as not to have impacts on the environment. So it's not, I would not characterize this as a, as a major overhaul of Seeker in any way. Uh, what we're trying to do is to improve it a bit, uh, encourage the right type of projects so they don't have to go through Seeker. Um, but uh, we are still, you know, we've, we've had two years of stakeholder meetings and, you know, there's, there's a lot of disagreement about what is the right way to reform Seeker, but we're, we are going to put a proposal out, you know, for public review, hopefully later this year. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I am cautious about changing Seeker and uh, thank you for your response. We will look for more information and, and I'm sure Mr. Smith, you 
I think the answer, short answer is both. I mean, it is cleaning up tire uh, waste sites and it funds employees that work making sure that those sites are cleaned up but are happy to get you the numbers. Yeah, trying to get the numbers as far as people the cost to yep. Same thing with super fund. That's yep. all I want to ask at this time. Be happy to provide that for you. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, good, good morning, good morning. Commissioner. Thank you very much for your testimony. So just a couple of follow-up questions um, on the issue of uh, grind. Mm -hmm. um, we are getting water that has uh, grind in it. Is that, did you say, from other states? I don't believe so from other states. I think the brine uh, that we have issued beneficial use determinations for has come from New York wells. Do we um, ever test that for naturally occurring radioactive materials? I believe um, when it goes through the beneficial use determination, the waste is tested. And do we have any uh, testing that might uh, follow up after it's been used, whether there is any um, I'm not aware of testing after the fact. Obviously, if someone reported a water quality <coughs> problem, we, we would pursue it. Uh, you know, whenever salt or brine is, is applied to roads, generally it can cause water problem, you know, water quality problems to surface water from runoff. I mean, salt is a big issue, and that's what brine is, is very salty water. I will double check that to make sure that I'm accurate. But um, one quick question about um, <coughs> you run you run um cancer, uh not as many as they cost, but um, uh, do you envision any of those being closed this year? No, I do not. And um, in the areas where there is quarrying, uh, they are it's mining operation, they are quarrying, they have a permit. <coughs> financial security and I'm not aware of any situations where it's been you know abandoned and there wasn't enough financial security in place to do the reclamation but I'd have to talk to my mining folks and and find out if we have any current problems in places maybe you're aware that we do <laughs> okay well I'm happy to look into it uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We want to know where to apply. So if you could look at it from that perspective, I think it would be useful. And, and let me know. That would be helpful. Okay. Um, just look at you about abandoned well sites. Um, is it not accurate to say that there are hundreds of no thousands of abandoned well sites in New York State? I'm not sure you were talking about wells. It was quarries, I think, that she asked about. Okay, well, let me ask you about wells. Sure. Okay, is it not accurate to say that 
the money that was the, the that was money that was paid into a fund. That fund was struck, I believe, correct? It has been historically. Yep. Um, it's it it's not a very well capitalized fund in the first place. It's only a hundred dollars, I think, per uh, applicant. But so, would it be reasonable then to suggest uh, that with all of these abandoned well sites around the state and the little to no money left in the fund that wasn't well capitalized to begin with, we're probably not keeping up as well as we should or we might in terms of identifying these sites, reclaiming them, ensuring that they're safe, that sort of thing? Well, I think we started that process last year when we when you approved the New York Works 2 money that included $2 million for exactly that purpose. Another $2 million is included this year. We have um, put together an RFP for firms to bid on for closing wells, and we've identified the wells that we think are the highest priority in terms of, uh, you know, potential exposure and damage to the environment. So we, we have two RFPs going out under the current year contract, and we'll do the same thing next year, and it could result in the closure of dozens, if not hundreds, of wells. So I acknowledge that uh, this has not been handled well in the past, and these, these abandoned wells have been neglected, but I think we, we made a start on it in the current fiscal year, thanks to you, your inclusion of the funds for it. Thank you. I'm slowly moving Betty. Sure. Um, really pleased about uh, the executive order that was issued um, last night by the governor. Can you tell me, and, and again, really appreciate your assertiveness and your responsiveness by the way of doing the funding period and then um, uh, agreeing to hold a, a public training on this. So, uh, really appreciate the responsiveness. Can you tell me the conditions of the executive order? Does this mean a permit? Right. Um, it it doesn't mean that permitting process is on hold. It doesn't mean that the permitting process is on hold. We obviously extended the comment period, and we're we're very interested in hearing from the community. We have to go through the permitting process, and we haven't. There is no foregone conclusion here, one way or the other. Uh, the expansion, and, and I, I would point out that our, our jurisdiction on that pro project is limited. We ha don't have jurisdiction over the rails, off you know, off-site. The application was for uh, a number of boilers to be included so that they could heat the oil for. Uh, ease of transporting it off the tankers. So, uh, you know, the governor is actually, uh, you know, his, between his executive order and us appealing to the federal government to act more quickly, we are concerned and want to look at all of our programs that apply to spill prevention and response. Um, the facilities like the one in Albany do have a spill prevention and response plan that they submitted to us with their original permit. But we're going to be reviewing those as they apply to all facilities across the state and taking a closer look at them, at them making sure that they are as protective as possible. But we have to work within the limits of our jurisdiction. So while the, the permit's not on hold, uh, you, we, are, we want to invite public comment. We're going to scrutinize it, and we'll have to make a decision at the end of the day. Okay. And again, appreciate your my colleague, John McDonald, is um, the quote that is, is um, in John McDonald's and the Sure. And it's appreciated in the conference that I've come here to see. Thank you. So, we're going to do it all the way. We want to not just our district and all the cases, but the issue of the minimum is the just very quick question, I know you've addressed a few questions on uh, EPF, the environmental protection. Chair, uh, thank you for uh, being willing to serve in your capacity. You're doing a great job at a very difficult time in our history. And the same holds true for your staff, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. I appreciate the support.
Next speaker is Rose Harvey, Commissioner of the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. Not one will. Quiet, please. Not one will. 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 Not Thousands of wells in Pennsylvania, hundreds they can't find, abandoned wells in Pennsylvania, still the little they are buying, they can't find. Commissioner, Commissioner, you can begin as soon as the audience uh, will allow you to.